Erev Shabbat Shalom Rabotai, we're continuing with our Mishnah Yumi, Mesechet Maaser Sheni, we're up to Perik, Hey Mishnah Gimel, today's Mishnah should be Leilu Nishmat, Neria Ben Svetlana, Aran Baev, and Eliyahu Ben Burcha Yisraelov, Menuchatam Megan Eden, Amen. Like we mentioned in the earlier Mishnahot, Mishnahot, Revai is similar to Maaser Sheni in that it must either be eaten in Yerushalayim or be redeemed. This Mishnah, which also appears in Mesechet Pe'ah Mishnahot, Chapter 7, Mishnah 6, and Mesech Ediyot Mishnah, Chapter 4, Mishnah 5, cites two machlokot, two disputes between Bet Shammai and Bet Hillel about how far the similarity between Rivai and Maaser Shini extend. This is the first machloket. Kerem Rivai, the produce of the fourth year of a vineyard. Bet Shammai Amrim, Bet Shammai Say, En Lo Chomish, it is not sub- subject to the law of a fifth, which is the halacha, that a person must add a fifth when he redeems his own produce, like we learned in chapter 4, Mishnah 3, that if someone redeems his own Maaser Shini produce, he must add a fifth to its value. Bet Shemai hold this halacha does not apply to someone redeeming his Rivai, Ven lo bi'ul, and it is not subject to the law of removal in the fourth and seventh years of the Shemitah cycle. Re- the reason being because the Torah mentions these laws only in connection with Maaser Shini, not Rivai, and Vashim explain that the Mishnah later on will teach the Maasil Shini is subject to the laws of Bi'ul, which is removal of Maasrot, meaning that a person must eat all his Maasil Shini produce and use up all his Maasil Shini money before Pesach of the fourth and seventh years of the Shemitah cycle. Any Maasil Shini or redemption money still left at that time must be destroyed. Bet Shemai hold that the halacha of re- removal of Bi'ul does not apply to Rivai, therefore, someone who has Rivai in his possession at Pesach of the fourth or the seventh years of the cycle, does not have to destroy it, rather it can take it to Ushalayim, or redeem it even afterwards. Beit Hilal Omrim, but Beit Hilal say Yeshlo, Revai is subject to both the halacha of a fifth, and the halacha of removal, just like Maaser Shini, because the, the law of Revai, is learned from the law of Maaser Shini, and the Mephoshim explain, the Torah refers to both Revai, and Maaser Shini, as Kodesh sanctified, in chapter Vaikra, chapter, uh, in Sefer Vaikra, I'm sorry, chapter 19, Pasuk 24, and chapter 27, Pasuk 30, these words create what we call, Gzera Shava, between Revai and Maaser Shini, a connection of the words, teaching us to learn the halacha from one, I'm sorry, teaching us to the halacha of one from the other. Now the Mishnah is going to quote the second machloket. Bet Shema Amrim, Bet Shema Isay, Yesh lo peret v'yesh lo olelot. The fruit of a fourth year vineyard is subject to the law of peret and the law of olelot, which are two kinds of grapes that must be left for the poor to take. Peret refers to grapes that fall off of a cluster as it is being picked. Olilot are undeveloped clusters. We spoke about this in Mesechet Pe'at, chapter 7, Mishnah 3 to 4. The Torah and Sefer Vaikra, chapter 19, Pasuk 10, requires the owner to leave Peret and Olilot for the poor to take. According to Bet Shammai, Rivai is considered sanctified only in that it must be eaten in Yerushalayim or redeemed, but otherwise it is Mamon Idiot, property of a commoner, which is the personal property of the owner. Therefore, Rivai is subject is to, I'm sorry, Therefore, Rivai is subject to Peret and Olelot like all other grapes. And the poor people t- who take the Peret or Olelot from the Rivai trees must redeem them for themselves and bring the money to Yerushalayim if they choose not to eat the grapes in Yerushalayim. But Beit Hilal say, All of the Rivai grapes, including pe- the Peret and Olelot, goes to the wine purse of the owner. The poor do not have any right to them. And the Mevashim explain, Bet Hillel hold that Rivai is like Maasir Shini, and they also hold that Maasir Shini is not considered that the owner's personal pro- is not considered the owner's personal property, but rather Mamon Gavo, property of heaven. Therefore, Rivai is exempt from all the gifts to the poor, as in the case with all sanctified property, like we spoke about in Sechet Pe'ah, chapter seven, Mishnah eight. The owner that can therefore gather the entire, I'm uh, sorry, the owner may. Gather the entire crop, press it into wine, and bring it to Yerushalayim to drink there, or he may redeem it and take the money to Yerushalayim. Now, Bet Hillel, when they say all of it goes to the wine press, and instead of saying all of it go to the owner, they're teaching that it is preferable to press the grapes into wine and drink the wine in Yerushalayim rather than to bring the grapes to Yerushalayim or redeem them and bring the money, because wine makes a person happy and better able to praise Hashem for the fruits. That fulfills the pasuk regarding Revei, Kodesh Hilulim La Hashem. Holy for giving praise to Hashem. So that's what the Mephoshim point out. The reason the Beit Hillel say, Kulo Lagat, all of it to the wine, prestige you. That's the best way to, to do the mitzvah, to 
make the grapes, turn the grapes into wine, to press it into wine, and drink the wine in Yerushalayim. That is in Rabu Taib, Mishnah Gimel. Mishnah Dal now describes the procedure for redeeming Rivai. We learned in Mishnah chapter 4, Mishnah 2, that before we redeem Maasil Shini, we must first determine its value. Now, the Mishnah here is going to tell us a similar requirement applies to Rivai. Ketzad Podin Neta Rivai. How do, we, we, how do we redeem the produce of a fourth-year tree? The owner puts down a basket of Reva'i fruits to have its value assessed by three experts. Whatever price they set for this basket is then used for the rest of the Reva'i fruits. And the Voshim explained the redemption price of Reva'i is never easy to know because the assessment must take into account the expenses the owner has in growing the fruit. It must therefore, the Rav says, always be evaluated by three experts. This makes it different from Maasel Sheni, where the owner's expenses are not subtracted from the redemption price, like we learned in chapter 4, Mishnah 1, making its value much easier to know. Maasel Sheni can therefore be evaluated, evaluated by just one person, unless it has begun to spoil, because since it's hard to determine the value of spoiling produce, even Maasel Sheni must be evaluated by three experts, even in the case of Maasel as we learned in chapter 4, Mishnah 2. However, here, like we said, since you're subtracting the, the amount it took, the what we call principle that it took to grow these fruits, we require three experts, and then whatever price they set for this basket is used for the rest of the Rivai fruits, which Mavashim explained, it's not necessary to have each basket evaluated separately because we can assume that all of the fruit have the same value. The Mishnah continues, Vomer, Kama Adam Besela. He then says to the three experts, how many baskets of such fruit would a person be willing to buy for a sela while the fruits are still attached to the tree? And the Mavoshim explain, a sela is a large coin, which is worth 14 hours. A number of baskets of fruits can be bought for a sela. So the Mishnah mentions this coin as only as an example, but really any amount of money can be used for this calculation. The reason the Mishnah says, is just because a seller was worth 14 hours and a number of baskets can be bought for a seller was an example. Now the Mishnah continues Al Minat Again, just so we can read it straight. Then says to the three experts, how many baskets of such fruit would a person willing to be willing be willing to buy for a seller while the fruits are still attached to the tree? with the understanding that he will pay from his own pocket the expenses of taking care of the fruit until they're picked, which the Rav says these expenses include include hoeing around the tree, uh, guarding the fruit against thieves, and picking the fruit. So for example, if a person would pay a seller for four baskets of this kind of fruit after it's picked, which is a dinara basket, he will pay a seller only for five baskets of the same fruit if he buys it when it's still growing and he has to pay to finish it himself. The reason is that it costs him an extra dinar to pay for that work. Now, if a fruit that has already been picked is therefore assessed at the rate of five baskets of sela, not four. In this way, the owner is being compensated for the dinar of expenses he had in finishing the fruit. This lower price... Right, the Mitzvah explained this means in effect that the value of the fruit is assessed in such a way to allow the owner to subtract the cost of taking care of the fruit until it's picked. The Mitzvah explained, however, the only expenses that can be taken into account are the ones he has from the time the fruit became big enough to be considered a fruit. The ones he has before this time are not considered. The reason for this is that Rivai becomes sanctified while it's still attached to the tree from the time it becomes large enough to be considered a fruit. Since it's sanctified, the owner has no obligation to care for it or pick it and take it to Shalayim as he does in the case of Maasel Shini. Therefore, if he does not care for it and pick it, he is doing so... For, I'm sorry, therefore, if he does care for it and pick it, he's doing it for the sake of Rivai fruit and therefore we can calculate the price of the fruit in such a way as to allow him to subtract these expenses from the redemption price but before it gets to that size, it's not Rivai, he's taking care of it for his own need. Now this lower price is what he must pay to redeem the Rivai fruit. The owner then puts down coins equal to the amount of produce he wants to redeem and he says, any fruit that is picked from this tree is hereby redeemed onto these coins at the rate of such and such a number of baskets for a seller, which is the rate established by the experts. And the Voshim explained, Revai uh, fruit cannot be redeemed while it's still attached to the tree. Therefore, he puts aside the money and leaves it available for the redemption to take effect whenever the rest of the fruit is picked. 
Now, since he's redeeming his own fruit, he's going to have to add an extra fifth to the total according to Betila in the previous Mishnah. And if you look back in chapter 4, Mishnah 3, you'll see how this fifth is calculated. It's really a fifth of the entire total, which is a fourth of the amount. That is in Rabotai of today's Mishnah. Everybody should have the Erev Shabbat Shalom. Baruch Adonai Leolam. Amen Amen.